So I grew up in a uh, working class Māori family in Hamilton, uh, five brothers and sisters, uh, mum and dad working several jobs and so uh, I'm the eldest of our family. A life that was a good start, parents who loved me and uh, created opportunities and it was made very clear to me as soon as I was able to understand it that even though they hadn't experienced higher education that there was an expectation that uh, that privilege would befall to me and to us. Not an aspiration, but an expectation. This is our first car. Yes. How many kids that go to primary school turn around and run into a power pole? <laughs> he, you know, that type of person that he was, he was uh, very bouncy, very active. We, when we were first married, we had a, a flat in Ross River Street, then a state house in for about or oh, not quite a year in Melville and then we built our own over in Hamilton East that was just opposite the university there. We used it as a guideline to encourage all our children to look at the university as an ultimate goal. Yeah, the, the world was and is too exciting. I mean, it's almost a shame that you've got to have night time and, and put your head to rest. Uh, it, it's just so exciting. So many things to do, so many questions to ask, so many answers to find. And uh, I think as a child, that probably went through me as well uh, and represented itself in, in being very, very active, uh, very active with my mind, very active in sports. I'd play any sport going. First trip it must to be Raglan. Raglan. Yeah. Yes, so you'd have been six. Uh, I was able to experience the entire Māori through Dad and uh, walk comfortably in that, and um, to our non Māori uh, with Mum and walk through her world. And, and, and I think and I hope that's what, what gives me some of the attributes I bring to the table here today, that I seem to be able to very comfortably walk through both worlds. Mm. Sometimes people would uh, only see the uh, young Māori man and would draw conclusions and sometimes options and opportunities narrowed for me. Uh, initially they narrowed for me at high school uh, because it was made very clear to me I was a Māori boy. You're a Māori boy, Shane, uh, you will do five. But all my friends are doing six. You're a Māori boy, Shane, you will do five. And uh, I've never forgotten that, and if you want me to rise, tell me I can't do it, and then you just stand back and watch. Hamilton Central Rotary Club selected me as their exchange student to America. Now, my parents hadn't even been on a plane and yet that they chose me. And I look back, why did they do that? I was with five host families, three multimillionaires and two bankers. Uh, imagine the contrast, coming from working class Hamilton uh, to a host father and family who flew his plane beside the school, uh, landed and then flew me to his condo at Sun Valley. Uh, the following week I was driving the golf cart while he played golf with Clint Eastwood. Imagine that set of experiences for a young lad coming out of Hamilton, a young Māori boy coming out of Hamilton. Dad, what are you doing? They are taxing my uke. It's utes, not ukes. They are taxing my uke. You know, we're the best of friends. I love my family, love my sons. His mother and I give all to what we can, both physically, spiritually, to our children, to achieve their goals. And they can do it because of my wife being European and me here. The challenge was there right from the start, but we accepted that. And I think we've had a darn good go at it too. So I have uh, three children. Uh, I have a son who's 31 and twin 30-year-old daughters. And uh, they're just making their way in the world like other young New Zealanders, uh, trying to get on the property ladder. I love the grandchildren. I'm Papa Shane, which I know sounds like a pizza joint, but that's okay. So uh, I'm, I'm Papa Shane, and whatever their parents uh, say they can't have, Papa Shane makes sure they can. That's my privilege and my prerogative. So I love being a grandparent. I, I have a partner with me in this political stage of my life. She fills the gap and is the, the wind behind me. My partner's name is Yvonne, and uh, I, we're, we're fortunate in, in this career uh, for her to be able to travel wherever I go. So uh, when I go down to Wellington at the beginning of the week, she comes with me. She sits in the gallery on Tuesdays. Uh, we go home and digest the news. Uh, we share this journey together, and that's a real privilege. Hey, Dan, how are you? Come on in. I'd always wanted to, uh, to be a doctor. Uh, right from when I was seven or eight, I think I was carrying first aid kits uh, uh, in my lunchbox to school. Uh, 
20 years I was a GP in, in Whangarei and uh, I still locum uh, back into my practice every year during summer recess generally uh, to maintain my practicing certificates. I'm, I'm still on the tools. So oh, there it is. Uh, I'd had three consecutive terms at the DHB. Uh, I was published and won literary awards and, and so on. So um, I did put my hat into the ring and was absolutely privileged to be selected as New Zealand Harkness Fellow, which took me offshore to um, Harvard, to Harvard Medical School for a year. And uh, the faculty I was with said, uh, we'd like you to stay. I said, um, look, I'd love to stay. And so I ended up staying for another seven years at, uh, at Harvard Medical School. I um, was promoted to assistant professor in, in all the things that you do. I um, was deploying operational teams in the Middle East. So I got to see a large part of the world, help fix broken health systems uh, around the world. I come from a Mormon background. And uh, so that's uh, what has uh, anchored my early life and shaped some of my values. And um, so that, that is part of, uh, of what I bring to this role. And um, the electorate have been aware of that on, on the positions I would take on sensitive issues. An, an absolute privilege to serve the people of Whangarei and to be the first Māori MP in Whangarei. I will keep going as long as the people of New Zealand would like me to keep going. Uh, every day I, I wake up and I check myself and say, oh, why am I here? Oh, what is my purpose? Am I effective? and I have that privilege of uh, representing uh, both the people of Northland, the people of New Zealand, and maybe bringing all the skills that I've ever learnt uh, across a lifetime into one place to try and make a difference. And so I'm here to make a difference.